Hello everyone, welcome to another knife review. Um, today I have the Brad Southern Mini Toke. Well, this is a knife that I've been looking forward to reviewing for a long time. Um, I ordered it in July, June. I ordered it in June, and it was supposed to come in August, and it ended up taking a while. I'll get into why, um, but it ended up coming around September, and I have been carrying it ever since. And I have been looking forward to review it. So that's what I'm going to do today. First, I would kind of like to briefly talk about what the Mini Tolk is. Um, other than a knife. Um, it is more than just a scaled down Tolk. They made a couple changes, like removing the thumb stud and making a couple of different um, design changes. But it is also now made entirely in-house. Um, Brad considers it a production knife. But with the amount of handwork he puts into it, I know he grinds the blades. He does all the hand fitting. Um, stuff like that. Uh, I know that it is more than just a uh, production knife, um, even though he likes to call it that, probably to because he puts a lot more hand work into his um, actual handmade custom knives. Uh, but it's also made to order. Um, you can choose between a bunch of different handle materials, a bunch of different inlays, blade steels, finishes, that sort of thing. Um, and they're made in small batches now. And the reason why I'm doing this video now is because on his Instagram, he talked about opening it up to a couple more people soon. So if you're interested in this, then just keep an eye out, maybe contact Brad and figure out how you can get a hold of one of these guys. So first, let's start with a size comparison. Right now, this is the smallest knife that I have. Um, let me compare it to how about Spydeco Paramilitary 2, because I know a lot of people out there own this knife. You can see that it's much smaller as far as the blade goes. Um, it's only maybe about of a quarter of an inch smaller than this, than the um, Mini Tolk, because uh, the Mini Tolk has about a three and a quarter inch blade, and the Paramilitary 2 has about a 3.4 inch blade, I believe. So yeah, uh, what this is gonna be really close to is your ZT0450. Um, it's larger than like a small Sabenz and mini grip because that's less than three inches But um, what I think that means is this doesn't need to be like kind of a companion sidekick blade I think this can be your full EDC size um, It's definitely large enough for that in my opinion. Um, it's not going to fill any tactical role or anything um, But as far as EDC goes, it's definitely got enough blade So let's actually talk about the blade First let's start with a blade shape um, I think this is technically called a drop point. However, I like to call it like a modified sheep's foot Warncliffe style. Um, it's also, um, and it can also be called the Brad Southern shape, I think, um, because it is very common in his knives. I know that the Positron has it, the Spyderco uh, Southern has it, the Tolk has it, now the Mini Tolk, and I know several of his other custom models have a similar blade shape. I think the AWT is what it's called. Um, has a shape very similar to this one. Um, and it's very functional. What it does is it gives you kind of a little bit of the functionality of a Warncliffe, not 100%, but enough um, to make it very, or make it a, a joy to cut with and to pierce. In that it's very easy to know where that tip is because it's got belly. Um, it uh, doesn't have a, as much belly as something like the uh, Sabenza would have. So what that means is it's really easy to know where that point is, really easy to make uh, precise um, piercing cuts, um, and that's just something I really like about it, uh, and um, something that's just very functional and that you would want in a pocket knife. But the thing is, is it's not 100% a Warncliffe blade because it has belly, and what that means is that you can, it's really good with slicing and roll cuts too. Um, this has fulfilled every single cutting task I would need need it to and I have never cut something with it um, and been like man I wish it was this like sometimes whenever I cut with the Sabenza because the point is all the way up there because it's a clip point and I try to use that point I have to put my hand at a weird angle but you don't really have to do that with the uh, Southern Tolk and so that's one thing about the Sabenza that um, you know, I'm not 100% of a fan of, and I'm actually considering maybe trading this for a small and single. I'm not 100% sure if that's what I'm going to do, because um, I think the clip point is just gorgeous. But I think functionally, it's more appealing to have an Insingo blade shape. But anyway, the Tolk, Mini Tolk blade shape is very nice. Um, the blade steel, as you can see there, is CPM 20 CV, which is very similar to M390 and CTS 204P. Personally, I prefer both of those options over CPM 20 CV. 
Um, but that does not mean this is a good, this is a bad steel. I just feel like those other steels have a little bit of a finer grain structure. Um, the one that I prefer is, do I have it out here? That's disappointing. It appears that I accidentally left my swish buoy over inside, uh, my room. Um, I'm actually outside now and it is freezing cold, but that's, this is the only way for me to get good lighting. Um, but anyway, I prefer CTS XHP and that's what he had on the regular Tolk model. But CPM 20 CV still has a fairly fine grain structure, definitely better than something like S35 or S30V. Um, it's probably closer to that of maybe RWL34 in my experience. Um, but CTS XHP and CTS 204P can, can just take those carpenter steels, just really take a super fine grain edge that I really like. But CPM 20 CV is very rust resistant. It'll hold the edge for a long time, and it is not very difficult to sharpen. So it's a good overall super steel that a lot of people are like loving, and it's one of the most desired steels out there. Um, I've had experience with M390 CTS 204P, and um, I have had experience with 20CV also, and that's just what my experiences has have been. Um, as far as the finish, or, or actually real quick before I get off the steel, he does have other steel options available. He has a spray form D2. I forget what it's called, um, but he has that available. He has S110V available. Um, I was tempted to, to upgrade to that one, but I felt like it might be a little bit too chippy for me um, just because of my experience with S110 and my Manix 2, uh, my Blurple at Manix 2 from Spyderco. Um, but he also has uh, Damas Steel available, which is RD RWL34, but that, of course, is a major, major price jump from this. But yeah, those are the steels that are available. I know that he also plans on having new materials and steels available with each batch um and kind of like swapping them out so maybe s110 won't be available with the next batch but maybe you'll add a new steel maybe it'll be cts xhp maybe s90 i don't know um but that's kind of what he's planning on doing with these or that's what he's expressed that he's planning on doing um as far as the finish options that are available if you choose to go with a normal steel like spray form d2 cts or cpm 20 cv or uh s110 v uh, then he has a full stone wash and a satin stone wash. So if you look at the flats up here, it's, I believe it's a hand rub satin. Um, but whatever it is, it looks like a hand rub satin and it's very well done. Um, no imperfections at all. Um, that is an extra option. I believe you do have to pay like $15 more to get that. Um, but the other rest is this stone wash. Which is not my favorite stone wash. My favorite stone wash is kind of that which is on the, uh, Strider. Um, the Grimsmo Norseman, and also what is on the um, Swish Buoy, which I wish I had brought out here. Um, but kind of like a mirrored stone wash. Uh, that is not what this is, but I feel like that would have clashed a little bit with the satin flats. And since this is going to be, um, since it's a very expensive blade and one that, because of the edge geometry, which I'm about to get into, I will be using a lot. Um, I think I'd like this little heavier medium stone wash finish to kind of hide those marks. And, and speaking of edge geometry, this is a very well, well designed knife as far as edge geometry goes. I'm going to try to show you. It is super thin behind the edge. It is, um, comparable to the Sebenza. But the thing is, this is Benz's hollow ground. And also, the Mini Tolk, even though it's not super thin in stock, actually it's about the same as in stock thickness. But, um... Because it's flat ground and it it's just it just glides through cardboard. This thing is an amazing slicer. And um, out of the Avo and the Mini Tolk that I both had, or the Tolk that I owned also, the Mini Tolk, um, I mean those knives weren't super thick behind the edge, but the Mini Tolk is definitely heads and tails above the others as far as um, sliceability and as far as edge geometry goes. So I'm really happy to see that. Um, and uh, like I said, it's flat ground, so that glides pretty quickly. I apologize for the noise. Let me pause, and I'll resume after the uh, sirens. All right, so let's move on, and let's talk about the handle now. Oh, first off, I wanted to say that I love the maker's mark that he puts on here, and then he puts a steel in USA, so he doesn't mar up the blade. It's not quite as pristine as, like, maybe the Norseman, which is 100% clean on this side, and on this side you have the steel, and then you have the model number. Um, yeah. It's not quite like that, but it's definitely, I think it's very tasteful where he's done the marking. So anyway, talking about um, handles now, first I want to talk about handle materials. Um, the different materials he has available that I remember um, is titanium, zirconium, timascus, and I believe that's it. Um, I think 
yeah, I believe that's those are the only ones that are available. New ones might become available, um, but I went the titanium route. Um, the zirconium and the timascus definitely had a huge price increase. And with the titanium, this knife is super light. Um, I believe whenever I weighed it, it was about 2.3 ounces. And so that's just very nice. It's definitely under 3 ounces. Um, and I, like I said, I believe it was 2.3 ounces. And it's just very carryable overall as far as weight and size go. Um, the handles are nicely milled, as you can see. There's two planes. There's a plane up on the top, and then it kind of has a little ramp down. And on the ramp down, as you can see, hopefully my camera will focus, um, you can see the milling patterns. Um, it starts up on the top and then works its way down, and whenever it gets down, it gets thinner and more dense. And it carries over to pocket clip, which is a great po pocket clip, by the way. Um, I will talk more about that in a sec. Uh, but th that milling is just gorgeous to me. You can get it also flat with no planes. Um, and if you want to see more options of the Tolk, just look at the Southern Knife Group. And actually, Brad himself has posted a lot of pictures of Tolks that he's, or mini Tolks that he's finished. And so you can see the different options available. Or at least that were available. Ooh, almost got myself there. Sorry, my hands are going numb because it's like, I think it's like 12 degrees outside. But uh, whatever, I want to get this review done. Uh, and I've tried like five times inside and I just have not been happy with it. So, anyway, getting off track. Let's talk about the finish on it. Um, the finish to me, it looks like a very blasted finish. It might be stonewashed, but I, it looks to me to be blasted similar to the Sabenza, actually. But it is much more wear resistant than the Sabenza. You can see that my Sabenza definitely shows signs of loving. Um, and I've carried the Mini Tolka Ton too. And you can actually see spots of wear every once in a while, but they're just little shiny spots. They're not really snail trails, which I'm really happy with. I prefer, I would prefer to have little shiny spots than snail trails. The knife's ergonomics are really great. Um, in every single grip, uh, it's a smaller size handle, but it, it really fills the hand nicely and it's good in all the good EDC grips. It's just a greatly designed handle and you will not there are no hot spots or anything that i've felt on this not even the clip but i think what contributes possibly to the good ergonomics with this smaller knife is also the inlays it kind of fills the hand a little bit more um than uh, a flat one and i think even though the pockets um you can get this knife without inlays and pockets instead and even with the pockets how they look nice i feel like that might take away a from the knife ergonomically um and just be a little weird because your fingers would be kind of resting in those pockets, which is just a little interesting to me. But uh, some other options, this is bog oak. And as you can see, they're very well fitted. Um, no problems there at all. Um, and I love the pattern of the, uh, the inlays. But some other inlaid options, I believe bog oak was exclusive for the first batch. I don't know if he sold enough in bog oak because I don't see a ton in him. So maybe you'll still have it available in the next run. Um, but, uh, there was also, uh, micarta, there was carbon fiber, uh, I believe Timascus was one of them. I don't think Zerk was, but it's possible, but he's gonna do the same with the handle materials and inlays as he did with the blade, or not, excuse me, the handle materials I believe will remain the same, but as far as the blade steel, I think, or as far as the, um, inlays, I think it's gonna be like the blade steel, and he's gonna introduce new ones to each run and maybe remove some, so I think Bog Oak was gonna be one of those that might disappear, but he's gonna have new ones available, and I think that's really cool, and so, you know, no matter what your style is, you can get an inlay that matches it. If you want to kind of have it match up and pair up with your um, large Sabenza, you have a large Sabenza as a tactical knife, and then the uh, mini Tolk as a uh, as your kind of EDC blade. Um, you could have both in matching micarta inlays, um, but you know, it, I just like that it gives you options. As I mentioned before, it's very carryable. Um, part of that is due to the clip. It slips very nicely in and out of the pocket. It has a very good, like, enough ramp um, to where there's not a problem uh, as far as pocket entry goes. Um, it, you can see that it's got good uh, height um, uh, from the clip. The only thing that I don't 100% like about the clip is from the factory. Here, let me see if you can listen to this. Um... What I've discovered is that the clip is not 100% touching the titanium um, or the handles. That's not a terrible thing. 
the same thing is on my Grimzo and Norseman and I've tried to fix it and I haven't been able to and I don't really want to mess up the clip and it's something that I can live with so I just live with it. Um, but it's something that I'd rather not see. Um, I'd rather have the clip touching the titanium and not have to deal with that sound and stuff because I also assume that that's going to be kind of one part of the titanium is going to be worn out and the finish is going to be gone um, from the, that clip touching it. So let's talk about hardware and then we'll move on to the mechanics, which I know a lot of y'all are probably wondering, how does it flip? We'll get to that. So the pivot is very well executed. First off, the show side has got a custom pivot, which is very similar, um, if not the same. I believe it's just, I believe there are some minor differences, but it's very similar to that that was on the um, large Toke. Um, I just, I love custom pivots. Um, I love it on my Norseman. And I don't know, I think just a custom pivot can really... I'm not going to say make or break a knife, but it can turn it from just a nice cutting tool to a nice cutting tool and pocket jewelry and um, a piece of art. Um, on the other side, it also has a custom screw. Um, it is a very large torque size uh, and it's all very nicely finished. The screw's polished, so is the, the ring. And you can choose, as far as the hardware goes, the backspacer. And the pivot ring, you get to choose what the materials are made out of, um, as well as the clip, I believe, but I just went with standard titanium. But um, anyway, it's all nicely polished, polished, and it just looks very squared away. Um, another thing that I really like about this pivot is you can just crank it down, and that's really, you know Loctite is necessary. Um, at least for me, it's not. I crank this thing down, maybe not all the way, but really tight. I've got no blade play. I've been flicking this thing like crazy. I haven't adjusted it adjusted it for several weeks and um i just love pivots that are designed that way because i hate loctite although i just got a new um blue loctite uh stick um that i can just stick the screws in and hopefully that'll make loctite a little bit easier for me uh, if you follow my instagram you'll probably have seen that on my story by the way my instagram will be down in the description below but anyway back on track um yeah i just think the pivot is very well done um and i'm i just think that Every part of it is functional and artistic, and I l absolutely love that. As far as the other screws, the other screws are custom as well. The back spacer, you can see that mine's getting a little bit of patina, because um, I think it's brass in there. But you can see how it's very nicely milled inside. Um, they have a lanyard tube on the or lanyard pin or whatever, a little slot in the back spacer, which I always prefer. Very similar to that on the Sabenza and how it would look if it was sticking, if it had a lanyard on. And I always prefer that over um, knives that, you know, like uh, on the Spydeco Shaman here, that you would have the uh, um, lanyard go over the knife. I just, I don't like that as much. And I think it can mess up the, uh, the design of the knife. And I think that it certainly would have in the um, Mini Tolk, but uh, they did a great job in keeping that from happening. As far as hardware finishing up, it does have a stainless steel interface with an over-travel stop. That's pretty becoming pretty standard, um, but that's different than the regular Tolk. The regular Tolk just had titanium on steel. Um, and yeah, this is just becoming pretty standard in doing all of this in one. The first knife that I owned that had it, that I think kind of maybe was one of the first to start it, um, I could be wrong, but was the ZT0450. That came out a couple years ago, and I believe that that was one of the first to start doing this. Um, like I said, I could be wrong on that. That's just to my knowledge. So moving on to the knife mechanism. On the inside, it's ball bearings. There is no stainless steel washer that separates it from the titanium scale. So eventually you might wear a track in the titanium. I haven't seen that happen. Um, maybe because you, um just tighten the pivot down that makes this knife more prone to that i'm not 100 percent sure but brad has great customer service and since this is almost a custom knife or it's one of his in-house productions um in-house productions he will um hook you up on that but it flips very nicely they're ceramic bearings with a ceramic detent uh this knife is not the smoothest knife out there. It is definitely very smooth, but it is not like liquid butter smooth like what's on the Norseman and um, some of the, uh, you know, some of the other higher end ball bearing knives. Um, it's more reminiscent of probably like a Lamex detent, maybe a little bit smoother than that. 
or Elamic's um, smoothness. If you're familiar with Elamic, um, you'll probably know that at least in their 24-7 model, it wasn't 100% the smoothest knife, but it definitely uh, was smooth enough. This is a little bit smoother than that, but it, like I said, it's not quite liquid smooth. So I probably did a bad job of explaining that, but I'm you know trying my best to kind of give you all an idea of what that's like. It is fairly free, however. Um, whoops. So whenever I release the knife from the lock bar, it's getting harder to do this with numb hands, guys. But uh, whenever you release the lock bar, the blade will kind of fall shut, and then you can kind of help it the rest of the way. I really like that just as far as fiddling goes. Um, the detent, like I said, is um, ceramic. And one thing that I'm really happy that he did is he put a detent, detent ramp on the blade. Um, I took this apart, and I could see it. And you might actually be able to see it if you look in there um, in between the the separation of the handle and the lock bar you might be able to see the blade there's a detent ramp so what that means is basically i just cleared the detent there's no bump or anything as far as the detent goes um so by comparison here's my uh, grimsman norseman so i unlock it and i start to close it and then there's a snag you can see that there's a bump there so in closing it well, a lot of times it clears the detent, but in closing it, that's what would happen. Um, that does not happen with the uh, Southern Mini Tolk at all. So I'm really happy with that. Now, continuing on the detent. This is one of the best detents I've ever felt on a knife. Um, I've owned a Shira Gorov 95T, a Bodega, the Grimsma Norseman. And those are, um, in my experience, like some of the best flippers that I've ever owned or had or held. And I've held them a lot, not a ton. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in the hundreds, uh, or in the triple digits, and I know a lot of people have carried more than I have, or have owned more than I have, but, um, you know, in my experiences, uh, those have been great flippers, and I think those are well esteemed in the knife world, um, and this one tops almost, sorry about that guys, I believe my phone died, and so I had to let it charge a little bit, and now I'm gonna attempt, um, finishing it real quick. So, I also want to apologize for my hands. I've been watching a little bit of the footage, and uh, I noticed that my hands are just marred, and that's because I lift, and ever since I moved to Kentucky, um, a drier climate, my hands have just been getting destroyed. So, I apologize for that. Um, anyway, the detent on this knife is amazing. I've owned uh, Shira Gorov's B uh, Bodega, um, a ton of Norsemans, and this is probably one of the best detents I've ever felt. It's super snappy. Once you break that detent, and you can light switch or push button it but once you break that detent the blade just goes flying and it's just an amazing experience it's really hard to not get this thing to flip right yeah i'm just there we go i'm struggling i'm I, it's struggling to get it to not pop open so that's one of the great things about this knife and i believe let me just check my little notes that i have here that's about all i want all i wanted to say the centering of, is of course perfect the lockup is rock solid it's just an amazing knife uh the price on these for a knife um dressed up like mine is about 750 if you get a plain jane one with pockets no inlays and a basic steel and basic hardware it's going to be around 700 but that of course can skyrocket and the fin finish overall is amazing. Everything fits very nicely. The back face baser fits in um, very snug and, you know, everything is just very precise. So before I finish up this review, I just want to talk about the best, um, the best things about this knife. One is it's super slicey. The other one is that it's customizable, um, that it's very compact and very carryable and just the looks overall. Those are my favorite things about it. Um... And that's why I think that uh, if you like this, you should try to get one because it is definitely a one-of-a-kind type of knife. Well, I say one-of-a-kind. There's a larger version of it, but it's it's great. It's one of the best knives of 2017, in my opinion. It's the only one that I went, saw at Blade Show that I was like, I need that. And so I got it. And um, it has joined my arsenal of uh, everyday carry knives. It is not um, babied. Uh, is put to use um, and uh, I mean there's room for it in my collection it's it it's hard to not care to carry my Norseman and not this one sometimes it's hard 
it's really hard to choose at the at my collection at this point is just amazing overall but this knife definitely um is one of the best and uh, i hope that i've done a good job of uh doing a review on why i think it's one of the best knives out there uh the flipper tab um kind of sticks out a little bit but because the knife is already so slim in the pocket it doesn't bother me that much so i will see you on the next um video i uh might be on the shaman um this is one that i just picked up and that i'm really excited to get to use um but yeah sorry throughout the video also that there's been a little bit of a corner here oh the wire popped out my bad also this is mediocre hour amateur hour whatever it's called um right now uh but I'm a college student, and I'm trying to film in a college environment, and it's really hard to do that. But anyway, this is just a great knife. I recommend picking it up. Uh, I have more reviews out soon. So I will see you all in the next one.